are we going to do, Luna? What are we going to do? Hello, everyone. I am here to answer your questions. Oh, yeah, that. Let's address that and talk about how I haven't uploaded a Q&A in a year. No. Like a year and a half. Never mind. First question. Q&A number 16. Have you been to a competition in Slovakia? If you are not, would you like to? No, I have not been to any Slovakian competitions, but I have been to Slovakia. I went to Bratislava on my school's European band tour. We were only there for like half a day and we didn't even stay the night there, but it was a really cool experience and I found out a lot about Bratislava. We climbed like some tower and there were like really steep stairs that people kept tripping on. That's all I remember. <laughs> but yeah, I always love competing in new countries and I've always wanted to just compete in new ones. So whenever I get the chance to compete in a new country, I, you know, I'm pretty eager to take it. So yeah, I would love to go to a Slovakian competition if my flight was taken care of and my hotel was taken care of. <laughs> Which is better, YLM or Volt V2? Okay, so the short answer is Volt V2. But the longer answer is YLM only if you can't afford the Volt V2. If you're on a budget crunch and you seriously cannot spend like over $10, then get the YLM because that will be all you need. But the Volt V2 is way better than the YLM, and you should get it if you have the chance. And you should definitely get the Pro Shop version, which is only like 6 or $7 more expensive than the stock version. And let me tell you, the stock version sucks. If you're going to get the stock version, you have to set it up correctly. The way I set up my Volt V2 is I put Traxxas 50k in the core, and then I put some Silk and a little bit of DNM, and some Mystic, and occasionally some Lubical 1, but usually just like Silk and DNM. Um, yeah, I put that and then break it in, and it, it's pretty much a charm, yeah. I have seen and heard issues about Volt V2 pieces breaking and like its core like snapping in half, and luckily that hasn't happened to me, um, but if it does, I will just, you know, set up my other Volt V2 that I haven't set up. How long have you been cubing? Six and a half years. Do you think the next question will not be about cubing? Yes. Are you sure about your answer to the last question? Yes. Do you listen to Jacob Collier? <laughs> Yeah, I listen to Jacob Collier. <laughs> are you an actual person or are you an alien? <laughs> How do you feel on feet getting removed from the WCA? Well, now I can't walk no more, so I just gotta make do. Ow! What countries have you been to? America, Canada, Mexico, Turkey, Russia, Austria. Oh, and Australia, of course. How many pineapples does it take to get a world's podium twice? Hmm. Hello everybody, this is me with my two very real pineapples. These is how many pineapples it took to get podium in worlds two times. Two pineapples. Do you answer these types of questions? <sighs> what is your fastest square one time? You know, I hate this question, not because of the actual question, but because of the fact that it was on Instagram, and I'm getting all these questions from Instagram. So my last post was the post about this Q&A. But three posts before that, there's a picture of a square one and a time that says, oh, look at that, 334, my personal best. Maybe you should have scrolled through my Instagram before asking that question. Thanks. I meant gnats, not bats. Oh, okay, now I understand. Wait, no, I don't. Where's the question? Can you do a pull-up? Sure thing, Brody. Dude, dude, come on. I'm right here. I'm trying to do a pull-up, remember? Dude, hey, come on, stop, stop it. What are you looking at? You're supposed to be looking at me, and I'm trying to do one pull-up right now, okay? So why don't you just do one, you have one job, okay? I'm gonna do one pull-up. I don't have energy for more, I'm not that strong. All right, ready? Okay, one pull-up. Doing the pull-up, right? Dude, I did the, did you catch it? Did you, you didn't catch it. You, you're lying. We don't have enough SD card space for another video. Is there any country you've always wanted to visit? Japan, easily. I've always wanted to visit Japan. Every single video that I see of somebody visiting Japan is just like the coolest thing ever. Obviously I'm looking at it from like rose colored glasses, but like still, I truly believe that if I go to Japan, I will not be disappointed. What's your favorite song to play on the piano and can you play it for us? I can play it for you, but that question is a hard one because my favorite song to play always changes. Like right now, I really enjoy playing Naima and Emily. And if you want to check more out of me playing piano, 
then I actually stream it on Twitch along with my other cubing streams. Why can't jazz musicians just play the right notes? I don't know, we kinda stupid. Who motivated you to get fast at square one? So there are multiple answers to this. The first one would probably be DG because we used to average the same on square one and our little competition that we used to have between each other is probably like the sole reason that I like got serious into square one, to be honest. Like when we both averaged like low twenties, you know, I sort of started grinding square one cause I wanted to beat him. And then he just, you know, didn't grind as much. He was just doing other events that he liked more. And so eventually I got a little faster than him. And then the gap started getting bigger and bigger. And then I started realizing, oh, you know, I could, I'm okay at this. And then it was really like Brandon Lynn and Tommy that really inspired me to like get better at square one and like try to reach world class. It's really cool seeing Brandon Lynn's like world record average progression because he just kept on destroying it. He got like the first sub 10 average and then he got like a low nine average and then he got like a low eight average and then that stood for a while. <laughs> but yeah, just seeing him at competitions and seeing how he did and how I prepared and just how he thought of competing in general, it was really cool seeing that and seeing how he succeeded in that. So I drew a lot of inspiration from that. What's a good song for casuals to get into jazz? Hmm. This isn't necessarily jazz per se, but it's like fusion. Um, I highly recommend you check out Anomaly because he has a really like listenable kind of music. Like it's very, it's like electronic jazz influence. Like if you want to get more into songs that just have more unconventional harmonies that are just more out, uh, then I highly recommend that you check out Anomaly. Uh, that's spelled with an IE at the end. And although he isn't like straight ahead jazz per se, He's fusion, and he has a lot of elements in his songs that, you know, introduce really cool jazz elements that you see in a lot of other more traditional records. And I specifically recommend him because I think he's a very good, like, easy transition into that kind of sound. He really doesn't leave you hanging, and you don't feel like you're listening to something that has no direction, which a lot of times a lot of jazz records do sound like. Also, I think some other good easy transitions are Butcher Brown, Roy Hargrove, some popular Esperanza Spalding tunes, and Ashley Henry. But obviously, it's not for everyone. Music is like food. Everyone has their different tastes. So if you don't like it, that's okay. Listen to your own music, man. No one cares. <laughs> is jazz real music? Please help. Google will not answer. I require your tutelage. Tutelage! The misconception is that people think that it's all just random notes and people just goofing off, banging on their instrument. And sometimes it can be that, like, <laughs> there's a lot of different styles of jazz, and almost all of it is usually, like, not free, which is when you have, like, a pulse, and you have, like, a tune that you're playing, and, you know, chord changes that are happening, and harmony, and it just makes sense, like, a lot of popular jazz tunes are just, like, Broadway tunes that are restylized, reworked, or reharmonized to sound cooler. Man, I don't even know how to answer this question. I got too much to say. No! <laughs> Do you like crepes? Opinion on lemon plus maple syrup topping. Well, I love crepes, and I've actually eaten crepes with you in Paris, along with Dana. And that was a great time. And my personal favorites are probably like the normie favorites, which is chocolate and ham and cheese. You know, pretty unoriginal choice there, derpy. Okay, well, sorry that I don't eat crepes every day. This is me generating an argument with someone that doesn't exist yet. But lemon plus maple syrup sounds interesting. I am willing to try it. What is your favorite jazz album? I really like Jaco Pastorius. Jaco Pastorius is amazing. <laughs> yeah, Jaco Pastorius is awesome. But that is a really tough question because same as the song question, like my favorite album always changes. I would say that my first jazz album that I really felt like touched by and that I felt like the whole album was just a huge, just like work of art was the drummer Nate Smith's album, Kin Folk Postcards from Everywhere. It's from 2017. And when I first heard the whole thing, I was like emotionally mind blown. I was like, how is this possible? I feel like I've been told like five insane profound stories. like but it's just music like that's that's what's so cool about it also dreams and connections by baptiste turban that is an amazing album seymour reads the constitution is amazing brad meldow one of my favorite pianists when you do the cubs how fingies be fast and that two likes <laughs> is a jaffa cake a cake or a biscuit i don't know what that is oh my god these these are like pims dude these are amazing these are the best they're a little differently shaped. But they're very similar to Pim's, and I love Pim's. I would definitely not call it a cake, I'd more call it a biscuit for sure. Maybe a cookie even. 
What was the last OLL and or PLL that you learned? If you remember that is. Well, I don't remember the last OLL I learned, but I do remember the last PLL. It was the bad end perm. And then I learned like the RUL, like, what am I even doing? I learned like the RUL, is that what I did? I don't even know how to do it anymore. But that was a terrible Alex, so I switched to the D, the RUD stuff. I also can't execute that right now, either. That was an okay execution. Wait, wait, wait. There we go, that was okay. How to break a time barrier in any event. Okay, so this looks like a joke question, but I'm gonna give a serious answer. Cubing or non-cubing, if you wanna get fast at anything, then all you have to do is identify your goal, identify your weaknesses, get rid of those weaknesses, repeat. The easiest way to improve at anything is to watch yourself do it because because you are your worst critic like take the first time you've ever recorded your own voice and then played it back for yourself like you hated that you hated that sound think about that same mentality applied to you watching yourself solve like imagine you've never seen yourself do this bad habit before and now you've seen it because you've watched yourself like say by watching yourself solve only then do you realize that you're doing this really bad pause every time for OLL and now that you're watching yourself solve it's much easier to identify those weaknesses so I think there are a lot of people that think they're struggling but will actually improve if they just film their own solves and watch them you should try to compete in official competitions you are such a good solver thank you I will compete one day if someone were to tell you two years ago that you would be Squan national champ and would have Squan world record, would you believe them? Absolutely not. If you told me like the day before I got it, I wouldn't believe you. I'd be like, what are you talking about? That's stupid. And the reason I'm saying that so confidently is because I literally didn't believe it when someone told me the day before. I was Instagram live streaming at some amusement park in Utah the day before and someone commented like, square one world record single tomorrow, Derpy? And I was like, no. And like... That wasn't sarcastic. It was like actual belief that I will not do that at this competition. I was like, yeah, maybe one day, but not, not tomorrow. I'm not that good yet. And then it happened. <laughs> the weird secret about like my good times or like any major accomplishment that I've had is like, it honestly came when I stopped expecting it. Like with the world record, I had this idea that I was going for NAR average, right? And after the third solve in the first round, I was like, that's it. My average is screwed. I am not going to get a NAR average. <laughs> and I was like, all right, might as well just, you know, not care anymore and try just going for a single for these last two solves. What a good mentality that was. <laughs> and I was just like, how, how does this happen? How does this happen that like when I genuinely stop believing that one thing will happen, another thing happens. And I'm like, how, what? <laughs> It's so weird, but I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> what are the best places to learn intermediate cube shape? Uh, definitely the cube shape parody document. It is in the description. What's the best and worst soda? <laughs> I, I love this question because it assumes that I have like soda ranked in my head. Like, oh man, I'm glad someone finally asked me what I, what I think about every soda. <laughs> I think Fanta is number one by far. And I think Sprite is Dead last. No one likes Sprite. Everyone likes Fanta. And I just don't see why anyone would drink Sprite. It's just, it's just angry water. No, I don't care about that. I don't drink soda. I don't like soda in general. <laughs> so my least favorite soda is all soda. <laughs> what is the most important thing to optimize to become sub 15? Please help. Okay, thank you for putting please help at the end. Otherwise, I would not have answered this question, obviously. Like if you ask them how to improve, but you don't tell them any habits that you have, like or any solving styles that you do, they're not gonna know what is wrong with your solving. Like like every speed cubers, every speed cubers bad habits in their solves is gonna be different than the next. But there are common tropes among like bad habits and solvers that I see a lot. The two biggest bad habits that I see from cubers that I've coached so far is inefficient F2L solutions and unnecessary U moves in between steps. So, so many people don't understand just how bad their F2L solutions are. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably have bad F2L. <laughs> you should be solving every pair in fewer than 13 moves and your cross should always be under eight moves. If not, then that should be fixed. Also, so many Hubers sabotage themselves by not learning full PLL, and this is just the stupidest thing you can do as an intermediate solver, because all you're doing by refusing to learn those 21 algorithms is you're just slowing yourself down. Are you a musician? If yes, well, me too. <laughs> I love this because it's like an if statement, like, 
if you are a musician, then I am too. What about if not? Like, what if I'm not? What if I answered no to that question? Then what would your answer be? Like, no, me neither. <laughs> like, no, you would still be a musician. <laughs> like, you should have just cut out the if yes. Just been like, me too. And then I'll be like, wow, me too. <laughs> Update on mains, description. What's your favorite flavor of milk? Neapolitan. Wait, wait. You forgot to subscribe. Oh, also, I have an Instagrizzle and a Snapchadoodle.